Hi, Aaron here. When I'm training people to design new workflows in Jira, the resolution field seems to be something that everyone gets confused about. That's the field that tracks the close reason for your issues. And when you're designing workflows, it's your job to make sure that field stays up to date. So in this video, I'm going to give you five tips for effectively managing resolutions in your workflows. What happens if you don't effectively manage resolutions? Well, your project's reporting is going to be all off for two reasons. Number one, Jira uses resolution, not status, to determine if an issue is closed or resolved. And two, if you're managing defects or anomalies, the resolution field is going to contain a lot of important data for your quality system. Tip number one, have your workflow automatically set the resolution when an issue is closed or approved. Here's a story in Jira that's ready to be routed for approval. And if I submit for approval and apply my signature, and refresh my screen, we can see the Jira automatically set the resolution field when I approved the issue. How is that rule configured? Well, if we look at our workflow and find that final transition from pending approval to approved, right here, we can look at the post functions and see that there is a post function that sets the resolution to done. Tip number two, prompt users to select the resolution when canceling an issue. Suppose we're looking at a bug in Jira and we want to cancel this bug rather than fix it. So we'll select the transition into canceled and Jira can display a resolution screen where the user is required to select a resolution and they can select the appropriate resolution. For example, won't do. And the value here is that unlike a transition into approved, there's lots of reasons why you might cancel something. So you do want the user to manually select the appropriate value. And there's a resolution. How is that rule configured? Well, if we look into our workflow and we find the transition from in progress to cancel, here's our cancellation transition. And you see that the resolve issue screen is associated with this transition, and that's what causes it to display. And you can create your own custom resolution screens, or you can edit the systems resolution screen. But as long as you display a screen with the resolution field on it, then the user will be prompted to set that resolution value before you moved into that cancellation state. Tip number three, prompt users to select a resolution when routing a defect for approval. So suppose you have a bug that you want to route for approval. And at this point, you want to prompt the user to select their resolution. And this is different from other issue types like story, because when you're closing a bug, there's other reasons to close a bug other than having fixed it. For example, maybe you're closing and approving the bug as something that is a known error or a related error condition that can't be fixed, like a hardware failure, for example. And the reason to prompt the user at this step instead of the final step is because this is the last manual transition. So if we set the resolution here, now you can see the bug is marked as resolved. And that's okay because now we can automatically transition this bug to done when the final signature is applied because the user has already manually selected the appropriate resolution. And this rule is configured same as the last one. Inside your workflow, on that transition where you're submitting for approval, you're going to associate that transition with the resolution screen, just like we did with the cancellation transition. Tip number four, filter the list of resolutions. This tip is a little more advanced than the first three. You may have noticed that when we were prompting a user to select a resolution reason, not all the resolution reasons make sense for the current transition. So for example, on this cancel transition, I wouldn't want a user to be able to select done or known error or other resolutions that don't make sense for this transition. So let's see if we can make this better. When we're configuring our workflows, Jira gives us the ability to specify which resolutions should be available on any given transition. So if we drill into our cancellation transition and select to view the properties, we can add a new property 
that will tell JIRA which resolutions to include. And to specify the resolutions, you're going to reference them by ID. If you want to find the ID numbers for your resolutions, simply go to the list of resolutions in your issue settings. And if you, for example, click on the edit button for a resolution and look at the URL, it's going to give you the ID number of that resolution value right there in the URL. And if you want to do something even faster, you can just mouse over those edit buttons and your browser will display the ID and the tooltip at the bottom of the screen. And back in our project, if we try to cancel this bug again and JIRA prompts us for a resolution reason, we can see we now have a filtered list of resolutions with the values that we have decided are appropriate for canceling. In the last tip, automatically clear the resolution anytime an issue is reopened. For example, let's say you want to reopen this approved story by revising it. You can see it currently has a resolution set. And of course, if you reopen this back to an unresolved status, you're going to want the system to automatically clear that resolution value out. And that rule is configured using a post function, same as the rule that automatically sets the resolution value. So if you drill into your revise transition, you see there is a post function that clears the resolution. Without this post function, you would end up with an issue that is back in the in-progress status, but that would still have a value for resolution. And that's it. Those were five tips for keeping the resolution field accurate, which is going to make your reporting much more accurate. For more tips, go to www.agileinnovations.tech. Thanks for watching.